What up, Fortnite fam? I'm Matt, back again to bring you the latest and greatest tips and tricks to help make you a better Fortnite player. So recently, we talked about the very best POI Fortnite has ever given to us. So now how about we swap things up a bit? From fallen legends to not very well received locations, here are some of the worst POIs that have popped up over the past few years. You ready? Let's begin. First on this list is The Spire. During Chapter 2 Season 6, we were treated with a primal version of the island, and characters such as Lara Croft and Raz joined the battle pass. Primal was a season with a mixed response. Some loved the adventure theming, while others were not so happy with the new weapon system. Mechanical weapons took way too long to obtain, requiring you to harvest cars slowly or drop in one of the prehistoric bony biomes to collect bones for primal weapons. At the center of all this was the Spire, which towered as a centerpiece for the entire map. The Spire had some interesting attributes, such as a mythic weapon dropped by a boss, as well as many zip lines to grapple up or down the spire as you wished. While reaching the top of the POI was fun for bow users, it wasn't necessarily the best structured POI in general. If you didn't zip line to the top, you'd be running in circles to get up there. Often, you would find yourself getting eliminated from behind as you went up or attacked by the mythic boss if you came unprepared. The Spire Guardian's ability to teleport towards you made it extremely dangerous to be here without a weapon, and thus it became a hit or miss within the community, with the much smaller Spires becoming easier and more welcoming for anyone either landing or passing through. Speaking of passing through, why don't you just pass on through to our website, proguides.com, by clicking the link below. It's the perfect place to get some pro-level coaching. There you're going to learn how to take advantage of any POI as you fight towards that victory royale. Our pro-level coaches will guide the way. Slurpy Swamp was a fantastic POI back in Chapter 2. Not only was it a great place to farm steel, but it had a special perk if you decided to land here. I am, of course, talking about Slurp Juice. You could find barrels everywhere to fill up your shields immediately upon landing. In fact, Slurpy Swamp was oozing with it so badly that it actually spread toward the water in the surrounding swamp area. You could literally just be wading in the water and filling up your shields to 100% without even having to use up your minis. So this sounds like a pretty good landing spot, right? Well, it was, until the aliens attacked. Yeah, in Chapter 2 Season 7, Slurpy Swamp was abducted by the mothership, and what remained wasn't exactly too tasty. The swamp, once dripping with life-giving slurp, was replaced with sludge and mud. What remained was renamed Sludgy Swamp, and it went from being from one of the best places to land into one of the worst. Players no longer felt like there was much point going for the POI now that it lacked those free shields. Instead, a lesser known POI would replace it in the form of the Blue Cube landing spot in the very next season. The Blue Cube would become the new hotspot for free shields, and the best part was that it was secluded, so there was less traffic most of the time. You know, Coral Castle is probably still one of the saddest POI to ever exist, but the worst part is that it didn't really need to be. It had a decent amount of chests and plenty of stone to go around. Originally, this POI was a tie-in with the Aquaman crossover and was basically Fortnite's version of Atlantis, which is a really interesting concept on paper. But when the POI was revealed, it felt like it was somewhat lackluster. Soon, Coral Castle was plagued by a few problems which had players almost entirely avoiding the POI. For starters, Coral Castle had the potential to be great, but its location just wasn't doing it any favors. It was already in the outskirts of the map, meaning the Storm Circle would almost always force players to abandon the POI right away. That would be fine if there was an easy way to rotate out of there, but dropping in made it somewhat frustrating to get back out. The constant rush of water made it difficult to use the boats to leave, and despite the amount of boats in this POI, you could only really leave on foot. Even worse, if a player had the high ground on you, there were only four spots you could exit from, so you could just be picked off due to how predictable it made any attempts at leaving. It just goes to show how even with many chests to loot, a POI's effectiveness can be completely negated by terrain and accessibility. Okay, now for the question of the day. You ready for this? What's the number one POI that you do not ever want to come back? 
and why? Is it for competitive reasons or do you just find it bland? Leave your answers in the comment section down below. Okay, we've talked about a POI that was terrible from the beginning. Now, let's talk about one that went from great to somewhat problematic for competitive. Towers has seen many variations over the years, from Tilted Towers Classic to Neo Tilted and even Gotham City. However, the name Tilted doesn't always mean quality. During Season X, Neo Tilted was converted into Tilted Town, a rootin' tootin' Wild West version of Tilted Towers, where the main tower was still under construction. At first glance, it could be a pretty interesting spot to play in. It had a nice aesthetic and on paper was a unique spot featuring unvaulted weapons. However, it did have one bad feature that completely toppled Tilted Town. I'm talking about no building zones. Nowadays, Fortnite has a no build mode, which many people seem to approve of due to the fact that it gives you a choice in how you want to play. However, Tilted Town was one of those locations where the building would sometimes be deactivated, causing many headaches during the end game. Essentially, you could play two separate games and be fully prepared to start building during the end game. But if the Storm Circle decided to go towards Tilted Town, it could just leave a huge chunk of space where you simply weren't able to build. So if you just happened to be trying to tarp and suddenly became unable to do so, you became stuck suspended in the air. Even if you weren't stuck in the air, your building techniques could become useless, meaning you had to re-strategize at the very last second. The Yacht is a surprising POI to put on this list. Added during Chapter 2 Season 2, the Yacht could be found at the very top of the map on the waters. In theory, it wasn't bad. A nice secluded spot away from the rest of the map, but with a way to rotate out quickly. It doesn't sound too terrible, right? Oh, well, kinda. The Yacht wasn't one of the most popular landing spots, despite having a full-blown chopper to exit. Or, at the very least, it wasn't competitively. Perhaps it was because the POI was too far out of the way for players to land there. After all, the only other nearby POI took a swim and a half if you missed out on that chopper. The Yacht did get a few updates during its duration, such as changing Meowsles for Deadpool, a few edits to the layout, as well as going from an unnamed POI to a named POI. Even with these changes, the yacht was still only really popular if you wanted to create some content for your channel, such as doing a yacht-only challenge and messing around with the mythic weapons dropped by the various bosses that called the yacht their home. Next up, we're going to be talking about one of Fortnite's most experimental POI to ever come out. This POI, simply titled The Block, was revealed as it flattened the POI known as Risky Reels during the 2018 Video Game Awards. Risky Reels was a somewhat popular landing spot, so seeing it completely replaced by a block of nothing wasn't a good sign. However, to our surprise, the real gimmick for this spot was that each and every week it would feature a completely fan-made POI by players for players. It was honestly a pretty fun time to see what players would make. One week you could have a very well-designed area, reminiscent of other POI, while the next week you could come face to face with a giant turtle. Designs varied and the loot was also unpredictable. While this was all very fun to experience when it was happening, it didn't exactly make it a good landing spot, or even a good POI in general if you were actually looking for something a bit more stable. So what made this a bad POI to land on exactly? Well, due to the variance of loot, players never really knew what to expect when they landed. This required you to completely learn a brand new POI each and every week, which was definitely not enough time for any competitive planning. Since the block would rotate at the end of the week again, this meant the cycle of learning would begin all over again. So, when it comes down to it, fun POI. But bad if you wanted to play competitively. Though, if it were to return sometime in the future, it would be interesting to see how it would survive in today's meta. Holly Hatchery is a POI gone wrong. But why exactly? During the Chapter 2 Season 7 Invasion, we didn't exactly have many POI changes. We had some new decorations for locations such as Believer Beach and Corny Complex added a new base to work with. However, Holly Hatchery was a late addition that wouldn't pop up until a later update when the aliens fully converted Holly Hedges into an alien biome. 
Holly Hedges was a fine enough POI on its own, but the addition of the zero gravity fields made it a bit of a mess to navigate through, with players becoming somewhat trapped in the heat of the moment. When it comes to fighting your opponents, you want to make sure you don't get caught by any environmental hazards. And Holly Hatchery sure did have a lot of those. Before we wrap things up today, don't forget, check out ProGuides.com for pro level coaching. All right, that's all for today, Fortnite fam. Did you enjoy today's video? If you did, be sure to leave a like and ring that bell to stay up to date with all the latest and greatest tips we have to offer. Also, feel free to leave a comment and let us know what you would be most interested in learning more about. We'd love to hear from you. Remember, Fortnite will always have a mix of good and bad POI. The important part is that you learn the map inside and out, so you can choose the best place to land even if it's not named on the map. Do this and you'll be guaranteed to improve. Once again, this is Matt and we'll see you in our next exciting video.